thank you, Marini, for the kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. And I'm going to talk to you about the complex type 4 Shaska fracture tips and tricks. Okay. So a lot of you have seen these injuries. And as you see here, and as Shaska used to say, these are fractured dislocations. This is not simple fractures. Um, Dennis mentioned a, a few moments ago that if you take a look at the lateral condyle and you see where the up from the femur, and then you see where the lateral condyle of the of the tibia, it's completely dislocated. And if you see the fracture goes all the way to the medial condyle. So these are, as more called in 1981, fracture dislocations of the knee. Especially if you take a look, you could see that the type two could be a lateral or a medial one. These ones are the medial ones. And in 2007, Walkis suggested a new classification, which as you see from uh, left to right, on the left side, the fracture exits just in the articular surface of the medial plateau. In the middle, the type B, you see that the fracture goes in between the spines and in the type C, you could see here, basically the fracture goes all the way to the lateral plateau and these ones are the more complex ones. And in this article, uh, Walk is mentioned that the compartment syndrome goes higher once you go from A to Z. I recommend to you to go and look at this fracture from China in uh, orthopedics in 2014, where they use now uh, the CT scan to get into this classification, and it's basically divided in two. The group one is a classic medial plateau fracture, and the group two is the medial plateau fracture with the lateral plateau extension. And you see here on this uh, on this fracture that you see that the subtype could be an anterior medial quadrant, a posterior medial quadrant, a posterior, a partial medial plateau with the sagittal fracture, which is a type A, the total medial condyle fracture, which is a type B that go between the spines, and the medial plateau comminuted. And you could see that they talk about the fracture line location, the fracture orientation, and the fracture type. And you could see there are different fracture types and orientations in the simple ones, but in the complex ones, you could see that it could be the total medial condyle fracture with partial lateral plateau split, the type C from Walkis, the total subtotal medial condyle fracture with posterior lateral quadrant depression, and the posterior medial plateau fracture with posterior lateral quadrant depression. And you see that the fracture line orientation in these ones are from the sagittal, obliques, and coronal planes, and the types of fractures that they have are different ones. <coughs> So, what is what about the soft tissue injury prevalence? And if you take a look at the three types from wild kids, and in this article by by Young, they look at this and they look at one type of fractures in type <coughs> A, six in type B, and twenty in type C. And what they found was that the collateral ligaments were injured in 63% of the cases, but only 11% of those are avulsions that needed some treatment. The MCL injured 29% of the cases, and they treated most of them non-operatively. The cruciate ligaments, 92.6% of the fractures presented, and they look at all these injuries on the MRI, but only 7% were avulsion fractures that needed to be treated at the same time of the tibial plateau injuries. The PCL was 70.4%, but most of them were incomplete injuries. And the meniscus were medial 44.4% and lateral 63%, most of them disinsertion from the capsule, not a complete injury of the meniscus. And you could, you could say that from this study, we learned that this type of injuries are fractured dislocations. And the reason we take an MRI for this is to see at these injuries, the soft tissue injuries. So let's go back to the case. This is a 27-year-old guy who will sustain a motor vehicle accident. He was driving his motorbike and he was hit by a car and sustained this fractured dislocation. And you could see on the animation on the left-hand side how the fracture goes all the way to the lateral plateau with some impaction in the central part on the spines. So here you could see that basically is the medial plateau and the, and, the, and the femur that is displaced medially and the lateral tibia dislocates 
towards the lateral side. So this is how you could see from the front, from the back, and from the superior part where the fracture line is. And here, what you need to do is basically push the medial plateau towards the lateral plateau, like you said, like where I'm going to put my thumb right there and push it. And you could do this with this technique described by Paul Tornera in 2016, using a, a periarticular clamp that you can put on the medial condyle and on the lateral condyle in the femur. And once you close this, you can reduce it that way, as you could see here, reduce the fracture. And this is fracture patterns are very difficult to reduce. So this is a tip and trick that you could use to do this. <clears throat> then is mentioned, uh, the difficulty is how to get to this ones. And I'm going to show you different techniques from different authors. And then I'm going to show you the case, what I did. So Marcus Shedini and Stephen Sims, when they found these fractures, what you have impaction like this one on the lateral side, what they suggested is converting a type 4 into a type 6, doing a osteotomy on the lateral side. And these are pictures taken from the article when they did the osteotomy with the dashed line is, and you could see where the arrows pointed all the impaction on the medial side in the central part and how you can elevate this and reduce them. And once you reduce them, you fix it like a bicondylar tibial plateau. This is the proposal by Christoph Sommer and Yves Acklin to, a, to an extended medial approach in posterior medial fracture dislocation. So here's a case from Christoph that you could see it goes all the way to the medial side of type C, but some impaction on the lateral side, as you could see right there. And then what he says is come from the medial side and then respect the pes anserinus and then work from the posterior medial side, and you could see all the fracture line. And as that is mentioned, you could see at the CT scan that you choose the window that you're going to work through. And the, here is Christoph putting a, uh, a spreader in between the fracture lines, opening the fracture side, and getting with the elevator to elevate the lateral side, as you see right there. And you see how the, the lateral side the impaction is reduced from the medial side, and then you see there a buttress plate from the posterior medial corner. And Christoph suggested also that you could get, once you come from, let me go back from this, you could go to the anterior part and go parapatellar and get a small incision that you can suture back the meniscus, uh, I'm sorry, the ACL in case it is disrupted. So what are the goals of treatment on medial in complex medial plateau? One, you have to respect the soft tissues because that will take you to the approaches and timing of your doing this. You have to restore the anatomy of the articular surfaces, especially when there is comminution in the central and lateral part. You have to give an stable fixation to the fracture fragment that includes the tibial spine and correct the axis length and rotation. And at last but not least, you have to repair the meniscal and or the ligament injuries as far as they are necessary and possible. So this is the guy, as you could see there. This is the injury. So the day number one, we put an X fix on it. And I want to point it out that I put the X marks where my pins are going to be. I draw the patella and I draw what I think on day one, what is my future incision. So you could see I draw a line in the central part and I draw what I thought at that point could be my incision on the medial side. And I try to avoid this for the future uh, surgery. So here you see the X fix at the end. You could see here the CT scan with the impaction centrally and posteriorly on this one. You could see there that the central part is the central and posterior is completely comminuted. The medial side is respected. So this is a type C injury. You could see there is central and posterior, and you could see there on the 3D reconstruction that mainly the condyles are okay, but the central lateral and posterior is completely comminuted. So this is the X-rays of the, after the uh, spanning X-fix. So what the reduction? You need to reduce the posterior lateral depression. You need to fix the posterior medial buttress, reduce and fix the tibial spines and the ACL.
So what I did after studying the CT scan, I decided to use this approach described by uh, Espinosa and Alan Jones and Adam Starr from Dallas, where they use a midline entering incision for isolated medial plateau fractures. And what they do is a central skin incision coming from the lateral side and then dislocate the patella so you can see the whole joint and expose it that way so you can treat also the um, ACL and fix this. So this is from now on, on your left-hand side is the head and on the right-hand side is the foot of this patient. So this is the patient the day we did the surgery. This is the approach, as you could see there. And here we're looking uh, at the injury with an spreader on the distal part. You could see there, this is another picture. We open the fracture side, we elevate the postural part, and now we K wire with uh, shunt spins, we manipulate the fragments, reduce under direct vision with a point of reduction clamp. And then you could see basically just the anterior part, and these small cell retractors are holding the ACL right there. And here you see at the end how with tunnels we repair the ACL as you see right there, and with tunnels, we put it back and the spines in place. And this is the immediate postoperative exercise with a medial plate and some rafting screws from the lateral side. And you could see, as Dennis mentioned, these two rafting screws are very posterior to hold the impaction in the, la in the central part, posterior lateral, and you could see the spines have been attached with sutures. This is the follow-up. And this is one year follow up. And this is the range of motion. And I was lucky to see him uh, just eight years later. This is this function. Unfortunately, didn't get some x rays at that time, but this is the function of this person. So, in summary, what I told you is that you need to choose a one approach, either medial anterior to do a reduction of the posterior lateral impaction, to put a medial buttress place and to reduce and fix the ACL and restore all the, uh, these complex injuries. I thank you very much for your attention.